this. I'll go live. There we go. I think I'm good. Alright. Alright, everybody out there, this is the live stream. So I'm going to take a pause. We'll be back at uh, Zern and Vikings booth here in a little bit. I think we're good. Fire Protection Podcast, Drew Slocum here at the Inspect Point booth at AFSA. We're going to go uh, check out Zern here in a second. I'm going to give them a little time with us since they're uh, gracious enough to partner up with us in some stuff. So going to head over there right now. You guys ready for this? I'm live. Yeah, I'm just here to hold the camera. Yeah. Camera? I thought this was a podcast. It is. It's live. I'm, I'm live right now. So. Just shaking everybody. Yeah. yeah. I got I got you tagged up. All right, one more. Yes. Yeah, one more. They turned the, they, they had the music blaring in here, so. Yeah, I mean, now I feel like everybody keeps, yeah, I think, I think keeps they uh, turned it down. Leaping in. The, the apprentice guys are getting going. Cool. Good, 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 good. All right. Can you get in there? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're checking out Will's stuff, not mine. Well, man, there's something in your No? No, nah, it's just oh, the mic. Okay. It's <laughs> picking it up. Awesome, man. Thanks, Will, for, for Thank joining us. Thank you very much. Us. Appreciate yeah, you yeah. using that. Will, well, all good with, uh, with Zern. How's it going, everybody? Right? Well, I'm, I'm leading the fire protection and water division. Uh, we're actually Zern uh, Water Solutions, right? So we, we're more than fire, we're plumbing. Uh, mechanical as well, but um, I get the pleasure of leading the fire troops to, to awesome. So this is our, our valve tree. We really concentrate on the sandpipe, as you can see um, here uh, outside of the backflow. So we'll, we'll touch the backflow is obviously our core business, but um, been doing a lot of great things in the valve world, Drew, and with the standpipes and, and trains oh, yeah. and stuff like that. So this is this has been a big big draw here. This is the the ZW5000. So that's been the big draw for us this, this week and in the last year or so really um, taking the PRV world with, with the amount of high rises and, and oh, yeah. PRV that's out there now um, we found it to be a real uh, it's a gap uh, as far as the learning goes so the, the end user on that piece right there if you don't know this is the fire department so right. a lot of the people out here uh, what they work with is the automatic sprinkler systems and, and that's that's perfect that's what's saving lives but at the end of the day if that fails um, and the, the, the sprinkler system is not putting out the fire, the fire department will come in and they're connecting in to our hose valves. Um, but typically, you know, a standpipe could have three, 300 PSI of pressure. Right? right, right. And so their hoses are just really designed uh, for less than 175 and yep. the typical sweet spot in the 125 range. And so um, this valve allows them to connect in. Uh, we've already have a pressure reduced to a specific spot according to the drawings. But right. What we found in this world is uh, these, unfortunately, in where y'all world, they're not serviced oh, yeah. properly. They're yeah, not yeah, they're yeah. not set properly from the beginning. So, you know, when you guys work with the service contractors out there, what the big thing we train on is in a PA twenty five is it's every five years these valves have to be full flow tested. Oh, and and so that's right. an interesting piece that people skip over, um, and I and it's it's a deadly skip because uh, if this valve at the end of the day, if, if when this valve the end user the fire department connects in. And this valve doesn't work properly. Oh, yeah. All else is already failed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then there's there's things like the one meridian. So this is a uh, field adjustable. Yes, sir. Right. Right. And so they're doing that at, uh, every five year, right? They're on the on the full flow test is every flow. five. So one their their yearly inspection is a visual, and with that we're looking. Uh, we just do it. You can turn the hand rule, which that doesn't do anything. But you'll turn that to exercise it. You look for any uh, leaks here. We have a leak hole right here. If the system has gotten overpressurized during that time, you might find a little uh, discharge piece here. Yep. Something to kind of keep an eye on. But uh, the yearly is just simply a, a real, just like a visual. Yep, that's right. That's um, great. And they're all that way, right? So just because it's field adjustable, the um, this is a field adjustable, but this is the supervised version. So we have sprinkler heads downstream of this. Oh, so if you see this right, piece right, here, right, this right. that's what that's that's the differential. The valve is very similar and actually kind of the same, other than when you get to this piece here. So we supervise. Um, the, the four series, it's a 5004, 
Um, and that gets supervised. And so downstream from here, you'll have your automatic sprinkler systems. Right. Um, and then right next to that, typically in the stairwell, you will have where the fire department uh, can hook up with the standard gotcha. as well. Um, yeah, I remember being used to all the, you know, factory set ones. But those are always troublesome because pressure's changed. Pressure's changed. Uh, they don't get serviced properly. And so, so if you see over here, we still do a very a tremendous amount of factory sets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's fine, and it's, it's approved fire protection. Uh, our piece to the f factory set, and we, again, we still sell a tremendous amount, so I don't want to say they're not out there. But, but the problem with this is it's, it is sat in for gap. Yeah. So, if it was designed improperly, if the building specifications change, and those testing that we talked about could oh, yeah. happen, and the fire department gets out here with this valve, right. it is what it is. Right. And so if this thing's spitting out 65 PSI, they're done. And yeah. they, they can't do anything about it, and, and that's kind of the end of it. So we really, in, as we go out and train municipalities and we show them how easy this guy is to, to, to adjust, and really, in a fire situation, this breaks. This is just the carbon and plastic. It's got... Uh, Vandal resistant screws for, for oh for that's, that's that's not just a that's how it looks that's that's oh, this no. is that this is not a cutaway like, yeah oh, so wow. this is what it looks like right here yeah, so yeah. this comes slides down this guy here is our adjusting uh, mechanism right um, industry best in this at one uh, before this valve was 15 pounds of torque to make this adjustment this is the big deal for this so when this valve gets used that adjustment a three eight inch adjustment rod which somebody has always walks off with. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's too much money, maybe. It's too much money. But the cool thing about this, man, I saw we did a demonstration this week. I can. I'm, I got little boy hands, but a fireman actually turned that with his gloves, with his bare hands. Wow. It's it's nine pounds of torque, so it's forty okay. percent less than what was closest before, um, and that's the big deal because they they need to get in here if they're going to have to make an adjustment. They need to do it fast and easy. And so if this piece breaks in a fire situation, they just crash that, and three eighths adjustment rod, a Phillips head screwdriver. Wow. Just about anything can make this adjustment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and in the cool. past, it is a multi-step process. I don't even have my old one here, but in the past, uh, top comes off. You have to get in here. You have a one and eight inch uh, deep socket. And we found that the, the fire department's go bags or their high rise oh, yeah, yeah. bags never had they're, that they're, equipment. They're in go mode. Right? That's right. And yeah. so we had we came up with you know, a couple of years of talking to these guys and what they need. And that was the, the end result of it. And it's... Uh, it's doing really well. And the, the biggest piece I think that we're getting out here is, and I, I'm going to finish with that piece on it, is the NFPA 25 training. Yeah. The, every five-year inspection of this yeah. valve is so important. Yeah. And that's what, you know, my team goes out and trains on that and the importance of it. And then from there, um, hopefully that leads to I'm moving around here because this is a five-year problem as well. As we ACBs. See in, yeah. The automatic control uh, pressure regulating valves. So. And this is one that people – seem to be pretty scared of i mean you think this I mean, you they, they get a little scared of this but then they get into here and it's hey will we, we, how do we set it up uh, how can we you know can you come out and help us with that piece and you know, how do we test it so lots of pieces but i will tell you this the an acv as far as accuracy goes is going to always provide um a little more accuracy than a direct acting prv right. and, and so these valves will operate irregardless of our incoming uh, gallon per minute we're going to have zero fluctuation in our pressure so in situations where that's imperative, um, an ACV is the way to go. Um, they uh, there's some NFPA designs that make them a little bit prohibitive to use in place of direct acting PRVs. Right. But again, there are markets uh, throughout the country that don't accept direct acting PRVs because yeah. of the fluctuations that they can provide right. versus an ACV. So um, we yeah. have both, but uh, Predominantly in the high rise situation, you'll find that. direct action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be the ones. Well, I see a lot of these in like the big high rises in New York and everything. And you know, you'll see both, but sometimes the engineers will reject that and they want to test. Chicago is our probably our biggest, biggest. market, I think, uh, that does not allow direct acting PRVs. Wow. So it's all they are ACV market and um, now the know. big thing with with the five year what we have seen, I don't know if Chicago's doing it, but it, it's just it's finally coming around where they're they're having to the five year test these. And a lot of the times, there's nowhere you have to do a full flow on. Where yes. do you put the water? Well, if they're not designed with a drain riser, like, and <laughs> where a you, lot of buildings. Yeah. Yeah. And where same thing with that? the direct acting, right? So, yeah. you know, I can tell you all the different stories you hear. Um, and unfortunately, what I'll tell you, Drew, what happens most is they don't put it anywhere, they don't test. And yeah. so when they come across that, that hard to find thing, Somehow or another, they get it through, and because there's not enough knowledge on that, was supposed to have a full flow test that right. gets a green tag put on it. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I don't, you know, I, don't, I hate to say it happens often, but I, I feel like it does happen often, unfortunately. Um, 
because there can be a massive it is an expense to the building owner. Yeah. And, and let's be clear, if, if, if the building owner doesn't understand it and they right. get one price for uh, somebody that just puts a green tag on and they get another price for somebody that does a full flow test from the 45th floor. Right. And then you get into cities that you just can't dump the water into the streets. Right? Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. If that drain riser's not there, they might use a fire hose. But then where does the water go? And so you get into markets. You know, every, California is obviously one of the toughest. Yeah, yeah. It, you can't just dump water like that. No. And there's a there's a contractor we you know I know in New York that um, that has a rig for these. So what they'll do is they'll shut it down, they'll pop it out, and they'll do a bench test right there, full flow. Okay. I, it's a huge setup. Yeah. But, but, so so Drew, with that, because you were right, bench testing is allowed in NFPA, but as per our recommendations, we would prefer you don't. And do yeah. you, can you know do you why? No, I don't. Well, because we feel like if you take our valve out and put it in a perfect situation, you've tested that valve. But do we test the standpipe for right. having tuberculosis in it? Ah, it from going from a six-inch standpipe to a five-inch standpipe? And so if, if, I, if my designer calculated this system with a six-inch riser and a, and a two-and-a-half-inch branch, and we shrink down because of Nick, tuberculosis, whatever you want to call it, and we shrink that to five and two, That's are my calcs right. different? So if I take this thing off and put it on the bench in a perfect world, yeah. the valve could perform properly, but... If we miss something in here, it, we, we, we might find it right here because why is this thing only pushing out 90 versus 120? Um, and, then, and then you start to diagnose it from there. Whereas yeah, if yeah. we just pull it off and put it on a bench, that's perfect situation. It, you're, yeah, giving yeah. It, you're giving yeah. a little bit. Of, you're giving a little bit of room. Now, it's perfectly okay, and I'll take that over not testing anything. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, I've seen rigs where they fill up a 50 foot. But remember, we're talking it could be 150 gallons per minute, 250 gallons yeah. per minute that we can flow through these and oh, things. Yeah, yeah. And so. Filling up a 55 gallon drum is about two seconds. I mean, it's. Yeah, yeah. So I, I wish there was a, you know, if anybody's listening out there, if, if anybody can invent a great way to uh, to get that water out without the drain pipe, yes, you, you'd have something on your hands because, um, what is it, 92? I don't want to mess that number up on camera, but I think it was nine before 92. Many of these systems weren't required to have. Oh, testing. A, a, uh, weren't required to have that that drain that drain. Oh, the uh, drain riser. Yeah. The drain riser yeah, coming yeah, up next yeah. to it. So there's plenty of high-rise buildings without that drain riser. And I think those are our biggest. Or the best size correctly, it's like a inch and a half. Could be an inch and a half drain coming off of a two and a half inch PRI. Right, and right. right. Um, so, so yeah, this, in the in the pressure reduction world, these are our these are our babies. And, and cool. you know, we, we, we work very hard on keep keeping these up to uh, the best in the market. Nice. And so, um, they've done really well. I, I don't know if you can see the end pattern backflow over here. Chris is kind of in the corner. We, we, 10 by 10 booth this year was a little no, tough. No, no, it's all right. I'll get it. Okay. Um, and so one, this is probably our newest design as far as uh, the end pattern and oh, and things like that. So as you see here, it's just tight, tight spaces. Um, we're getting, uh, it's, it was, it was designed as a direct uh, replacement for one of our competitors um, mm -hmm. that was, that had a market opportunity. We designed it for that. Where we're really finding this backflow um, doing places we weren't necessarily expecting is mecha mechanical rooms where space is tight and they still oh, yeah. want to have a, a reliable backflow system yep, yep. there. Um, or in, and where I never thought it would be working uh, very well was is in places like South Florida where even though it's outside, so all of our backflows yeah, in South Florida yeah. are sitting out in the open, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you don't think about it, but an eight inch backflow at a high rise is a big monster thing. It's taken up a decent amount of ground space and as the buildings get higher and they get closer together, that ground space becomes more critical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this backflow is taking, you know, it's, it's actually coming into its own with that as well. The setter makes it very easy, especially in markets where you have a utility contractor that's doing the uh, backflow. So this setter, it's an exact piece, right? So you can have your underground team is, is running, running pipe and they, they don't have to wait for their, their backflow team if it's different um, to come in. They, they connect into your setter flange by flange. And now the backflow is ready to roll. It, it lands directly on top of where it's supposed to be set, just saving a lot of time on the installation. Um, again, especially when there's a lot of times we have there's a there's a breach in those divisions, right? So you have a utility contractor and underground division um, running the pipe into the building to that five foot mark, and um, sometimes the backflow is inside of that zone, yeah, yeah. right? And so this setter really allows them to move quickly from that um, and. It's, it's been very well. So this, this backflow has been extremely well received um, and doing very good. So we, 
with made for a direct replacement and it's yeah. coming to its own with just some, some opportunities that we didn't even think of with the way great. buildings are going down now. So um, very good. And then you guys can kind of see this. We launched some new products recently um, in the last two years. Some of this stuff, uh, the listings and approvals are always um, interesting and fun to get our hands on and to do. Yeah, so right. Been going through some of that process in the last two years and um, so this is all your own line. Right? It is. It is oh, now. Wow. It's, it's been that. It's 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 been a, a little bit of a long road getting some of these things listed and approved under Zern's name. We, sure. We've always been, you know, valves for us have always been an easy piece because we've 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 always had them on our backflows. Um, just small things like we removed, we took the taps out so to give the contractors an untapped option, um, and really, it's a cost savings piece, sure. really, right? Because th this this is 100% geared towards a backflow. OS and Y, you wouldn't need taps on a standard OS and Y. Right, so right, right. We we leveraged our uh, valve relationships and just untapped those. Right. Um, added butterfly valve. So really, kind of completing that standpipe. So if I were to look yeah, at yeah. the standpipe, everything that goes down on that standpipe, we can find in this, even including the connection devices like grooves, couplings, and fittings. Um, so our old, uh, I call it my my backbone products, like the backflows, PRVs, and ACVs. Um, constantly working on innovation and doing things with those but they're long uh tedious processes so i don't know how familiar your group is but for us to bring a backflow like this to market um every size every configuration every piece has to go through usc and wow. it's a it's a approximate two year can be even longer but we go into the field for, for one full year oh wow um and and they make sure that it's all the way it's supposed to be it's, sure. it's really in my opinion, after seeing you know, seeing sprinkler heads with the UL and things like that, those are the, the testing once we develop something that we yeah. know works or we think works right. to get it approved by USC, which is in our world, UL is great, but we can't sell without USC. Yeah, yeah, you really, of, we wouldn't be able to bring a product to market. Yeah. And so um, it's a pretty long process. So because of that, innovation is slow, I yeah. believe, in that low world. Now, for us to come up with a new design and get it to market, it's three years and the way moving this, these things oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. three years it's, it's almost man you, you could have missed the boat in that oh, three years on something so it's interesting to see that and, and how long it takes to get something out and, and, and through the through the system so that's crazy um we take a lot of pride in our in, in usc and how we deal with them with our flow curves yep, yep. and things like that we're very stringent on on representing our flow curves per usc versus you know non-usc sure. flow curves and sure, just sure. trying to keep that that playing field even with them so um Hopefully, you'll see in the future from us uh, new large backflow designs. And, right. and my engineers are constantly, you know, we believe we have the best check system in the marketplace. I'm sure my competition believes they do. We, yeah, we right. believe ours is the easiest to work on and all that. But uh, they're still not sitting back. We believe it's the best, but um, they are constantly working on how do we make it uh, easier to install, better to service. Better to service. Uh, you know, the, the flow curves, are, you know, maximizing the curves. Right. And, and, and to do all that in a, in a way that uh, you can bring it to market and sell it uh, competitively yeah. becomes the challenge for my team. So cool. that's it, man. The, the, yeah. This will be, uh, hopefully we see some new new big backflows coming out and I'm excited to be part of it. That's awesome. Well, can you touch on the Thank transition you. from cast to stainless body real quick? Sure. So we are, ductile was a thing for years and years. Um, and, and we do a great ductile uh, backflow. But truth be told, it's, it's a couple hundred pounds heavier depending on the size. Oh, yeah. So it's a, it's a little bit more um, involved for an installation process. Uh, obviously, in corrosive markets, we, we do put an epoxy coating on them. But, man, backflows get stuff coming through them oh, yeah. all the time, hitting the checks. That epoxy gets uh, nicked, and it causes some problems. So the stainless is lighter. The curves are slightly better. Um, it's, it's not as big and robust as a ductile uh, for people, for you know, and you'd be surprised. There's contractors that are making a decision based on that robustness wow. of, a, of a ductile. They, they want yeah. the heavy piece, right? Yeah, the utility yeah. guys especially. So we're constantly working that angle of, of guys, have you, you know, have you tried a stainless? Because it's, it's going to be easier, sure. lighter, better flow. So right. we're, we're working. But at this point in time, it's, a, it's still a dual, a dual sword, right? So we have the same backflows available in ductile as we do in stainless yeah. at this point. With oh. different curves. But, but do it slightly different flow uh, curves. Uh, That's right. That's great. Well, thanks for joining us today. It's yeah, I appreciate kinda, it, man. You know, a <laughs> little uh, on the spot, but uh, yeah, thanks again. Hey, man. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for it. Yeah. Can you hit the, yeah, hit the button. <laughs> I don't know if
All right, I'm back. Um, Fire Protection Podcast at the AFSA Trade Show. We're going to do one more spot. Um, we got uh, Chris Sharp with Inspect Point. He's going he's gonna to be our... Uh, I got to get a laptop to pull something up over here. All right. Take a walk down to the Viking booth, Viking Supply Net. As you see, there's some uh, apprentice competition going on. Really excited to see this this afternoon. So we're, we're, we're live here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome. How are you, sir? Adam Owens. Nice to doing? see you. Nancy Houghton. How are you doing? Welcome to the to the Viking booth. Yes, yes. Thank, thanks for having us. Yeah. I'll, um, I'll, I'll give this up to Chris here in a second. Like, yeah, yeah. Hook up to this one. He's still doing a little. He's going to help us do a little digital piece of something we want to show. Ah, later. Can all I right. give you a few little yeah, yeah, yeah. Little pieces of yeah. I want to see what you guys here. are doing and kind of what you're debuting. So, so uh, I, I do work. You know this. I do work more personally now with, with more of our strategic partners across uh, the network for supply network. Sure. But I, but I am still involved with the Viking piece of the business and yep. really proud of uh, new Deluge Valve, our new VXD platform, as yep. a new uh, self cleaning. Uh, self cleaning, you know, self cleaning. So as as you see, this thing's in a vertical vertical position. Sure, it's a diaphragm. Yeah, valve. A diaphragm. So yep. when we call yep. it self cleaning, and we drain through the valve, it's going to allow the seat to be clean. Wow. Um, this is a uh, Drew. This platform, uh, the VXD platform, is is a lightweight ductile iron body. Mm -hmm. Um, it's uh offered in a inch and a half up to a ten inch. Up to 10. First I've 10, never seen a 10. First 10 inch valve for, for Viking, even. So uh, yeah. it's going to be offered in, in the 10 inch style. So it's all deluge equipment uh, and pre action equipment and uh, and ready to go now. Super Ooh. small platform on the trim. Will so, that move into all across all the valve lines eventually, or is it? It will. And you can, you might want to take just a little bit of a peek. And this is sure, not sure, even sure. at the show yet. We'll, we'll go through this, but. Uh, uh, I think I'll get Nancy to come over here and take a peek at this here with the valve configurator. But this is a new, this is a newer platform for us. And if you look over to the right, right there, the VXR. I don't think anybody here at the at the, at the show quite yet. Understands. Is that plunger upside down? Or that's not a plunger. Tell them why it's upside down. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I, I I started my career with plunger that is, valves. That is a that is a reset, a reset knob. We haven't even released this, guys. So this is the first time I've even getting a little peek at this. Anybody that's dialed into the uh, dialed into uh, to your show today into the podcast. Oh, this is your valve. Is this your valve selector? Of, it is. Oh, all this right. is the valve configurator. Configurator. Sorry. So what Nancy's doing right now is she's kind of walking through the steps of being able to build a, a valve setup, whether it's wet, dry, pre-action, and she's. She's messing around now with a with a valve we don't we haven't even released yet. So that's it's going to be fun to drop that. Oh wow! But that's really cool. on the underside. Wow! Yeah, flip flip it over. Can we get it even upside down, Nancy? Yeah. Interesting. So we can't tell you a whole lot about this product quite quite yet you because don't we don't even it. have it all. But <laughs> I like the fact that they've got it here for us to to take a take a look at. Now, it's you know the way Nancy was working with this just now. This actually works. Uh, on your computer that way. Grab it with your mouse. You don't need any kind of special. It's a web-based program. Yeah, yeah, I see that, yeah. yeah. But uh, it can actually, you can go through every piece of it. Whether you're familiar with the Viking line or not, uh, our guys out in the field like to use this with, with uh, groups that, frankly, aren't even familiar with the Viking line. So they get a chance to say, hey, this is what we have. This is You can configure it this way. You can work it this way. This is what we have. Yeah, it's a good way to know exactly what you need for what you're doing. And one of the greatest parts at the end, you know, you can get a complete uh, product summary down here. It's going to show you the actual part numbers that you've selected. You can fill out your name and contact info. You can send yourself up this list so that you've got a full parts list, or you can send it right to our customer service team if you're ready to place the order today. And the tech data part is really, really popular because oh, wow. you can get, it's going to pull right from the Viking website, all the most updated tech data for every piece that you have selected. Person or something, it. yeah. Yep, exactly. So yeah, it's one of our coolest tools, I think. No question about it. Interesting enough, I just noticed that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can see that though. This is our drive valve pre-action, and yeah, you can go straight wet. Wow. 
that's great. What's that web? What's the web address? Is it Valve Configuration? We get it straight from the the website, the Viking website. Yeah, go to the Viking homepage, and it's right under our quick links. Cool. That'd be a great way to get there. Come take a couple look uh, look at a couple more products, and Nancy's going to be ready for the new supplynet.com website for you guys. So we got a couple of things that we're excited about too. We've expanded on our InstaSeal CPVC InstaSeal line with the uh, with the sealing gasket in it. Uh, we've had the head adapters for quite a while, but we're finishing up with the uh, the head adapters with the elbows and the T's. Excited about that, and this uh, no anybody that's watching is going to be really excited to see what this is. Owens, what do you got in your hands here? This is really a gasket insertion tool. So sometimes you have some issues with these gaskets, and what we recommend after you've installed it is that you actually pull the gasket, replace it with something fresh, and it'll allow you to have the seal that's intended for right. the install. So there's a few tools associated with that. Uh, we continue to to enhance our XT1 platform with our sprinklers. Yeah. Super, super small framing platform. It's got the swing arm, swing arm for yeah. for the dislodgement. We call it. I call it a swing arm, or the the T is where the XT1 comes from. It looks like a T, but what it does is it keeps from any kind of lodgement with the pip cap. Sure. When it opens up, and and we're actually moving in this direction with with all of our sprinklers, but that one's that one's continuing on. Uh, another exciting piece for us is a is a redesign on a on a VK4621 concealed sprinkler that can actually be installed wow. if you can see that this is so much smaller it's very small but it can be installed now drew and chris with the cap in place wow so that can be installed with a cap on you never have to remove the cap before you'd have to remove the cap install it put the cap back on but uh that's and it, what we've got, got the there. qr on there qr for I, the like, I like i like qr codes i don't know why so <laughs> I, i'm all about them too but but check this out guys so what you're looking at is a polymer uh, really, oh, really plastic oh, wow. wrench. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, tested and approved, install thousands. These things are super, super uh, robust. But we also have the standard and tri, tri sure. and uh, steady metal. Yeah, yeah. Wrenches, but leave these behind. They're not nearly as costly. All right, the yeah. oh, that's a big part of it too, right? And the wrenches yep. are, you know, and it, it, a lot. A lot of our users in this platform. One of the big write-ups is they don't have wrenches, right? Yeah. So, you know more cost competitive wrench plus you got all this stuff on there so and 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 i think that's the way we should be going too with that and we all of us are are using 3d printing and they have the yeah, ability yeah. to do that and that's cool so uh everything we've got these days like you said have the qr installation uh installation guidelines on it something maybe not so super sexy but an esfr guard guard for esfr uh -huh. so you know 8-9 and yeah and our codes there uh for their racks and that's stuff. right yeah these are getting they're they're getting more and more uh, popular, if you will, or in, in need. So we're bringing out some some new products with, from that standpoint. Um, hard to bring a whole lot in, but if you take a want to take a shot up in this, what I want to, Chris, what I want to talk about is is new Viking foam and high X offering. Okay, I think we just uh, who was it? Chris Machaney in Saint out of St. Louis just sold our first high X job. Yeah. Uh, high expansion foam with, with Viking is something that we've been awfully proud of with our high X generators. Uh, they're, they're the lightest in the, in the market without a doubt, but they're still very large. So we don't have any on the floor today. Right. But uh, knowing that, uh, that you have another option out there. Now, oh, the generator. The high yeah, X yeah. generator. You got to, you got to, you know, mom, no moving parts. Oh, wow. um, you know, again, maybe something you jump on the Viking site, you get a blow up, a nice, uh, a nice breakdown of what that piece looks like. But uh, and then we've also got digital tools related to the high X systems. Um, if you know the process of going through and calculating a whole high X job can take a while. We've got a digital tool that just walks you right through it. Exactly which kind of job you're doing, what the specs are, and you end up with a full uh, product list. I've actually tried it. It's super easy Is to use, very, even for somebody that's not a designer yeah even if you don't quite understand what you're putting in you'll get just a, a very comprehensive list so our digital team did an awesome job with that looks like a couple of jet engines <laughs> it does <laughs> when you always very unassuming when you walk up to it but from a, a weight standpoint and I, I can't give you the full-on dimensions of it but what i do know is it it's not going to take a uh, crane to get them up there they're actually coming up two or three parts to assemble and you're ready to go with it. And uh, we've had a lot of great feedback with it. Super excited to be a part of that business is something that we've wanted to be in for a while. And right. our engineering team's done a phenomenal job with that. And to Nancy's point, 
making it easier for other contractors who maybe haven't been in that business sure. to learn how to do that and gain confidence to do that. So always working on a new service yeah. equation for them. Well, I know, and foam, foam is big, right, with all the changes potentially to 409 coming and all the restrictions. So I'm sure your team is high on the, you know, environmental Oh, absolutely. Piece of it, you know, That's what took us so long, yeah. really, was trying to make sure we dotted all the I's and crossed all the right. T's associated with that. Right, because right when you guys were developing that, all the stuff was coming out with the environmental regulation. Yeah, you're, that's exactly right. We had some. We got in the middle of something and had to do a little bit to, to work with them. Uh, one of the things that, that Nancy and I are, are very, very proud of outside of the products piece is being able to uh, – to, to work with SupplyNet.com, of course, you know, SupplyNet's our, our distribution run and distribution line or our arm of Viking Corporation. And Nancy's, uh, Nancy's team has been really just working hard this year to implement the new Viking SupplyNet.com website. Yeah, so our goal is to really to make it a modern shopping experience. You know, sometimes our industry might not be the most uh, digitally advanced, um, so we wanted to really mimic the way people want to shop these days anyway. And so um, the layout's going to They're not just... digitally advanced in, in the industry? You know, sometimes <laughs> we struggle. So Sorry. Viking That's is, you know, we're trying to get there. <laughs> So just making things a lot more visual was really important to us. So again, we've got a great digital team that has just phenomenal renderings of different products. You can walk through and configure your specific sprinkler. So if you need to choose your different uh, selections here, you know, you're looking for a very specific part. It's going to kind of change your uh, image for you, depending on what you select down here. I don't know. I do want a guard. There you go. It's going to just change it right dynamically. Oh, wow. And as you do that, it's going to pull in your specific part number. So it's building that right within the website. If you're a SupplyNet customer already, you have your unique login, and that's going to pull in all of your pricing right there. Place the order just like a normal shopping cart um, and get, get right to it. You know, we also know it's extremely important to always be linking back to that tech data. So wherever you are on a product, you can link right back to that tech data from the Viking site. It's always up to date, always uh, the most accurate information. So can you order from this too? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm not logged in right now, but yes, you can put stuff in your cart, place an order, it goes right to our customer service team and uh, get you your products. Yeah, I feel like, the, you know, with... <laughs> You know, everybody's having, you know, raw material and supply issues around around every every kind of construction trade, right? So I think the faster and more efficient you make it to, to order, the quicker you can get it over the team, obviously you're gonna get material faster. So and you know, on the on the on the service side, the quicker it, it, they don't even a lot of times they don't care what they're paying for the material. You know, they're charging less because they need to get it fixed and back up and running. So Yeah, and some of the heaviest users of the site are those uh, inspection and service departments. Right. Uh, they just need a couple parts. They can hop on there really quickly. It's all mobile-friendly, we'll and they can uh, quickly place their order. We'll have to find out who those are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our, our idea is to just, you know, also, also try to be, you know, certainly be the choice for the contractor who's out sure. looking and trying to learn and, and be as easy and as, as attractive to buy from as possible. Uh, one of the things too that, that Nancy and her team and myself were out looking for, you know, those those partners who can uh, who can work with the value systems that we have and yeah. understand uh, what it is that, or they have the, the congruent value systems that we you know that we do with regards to uh, causing customers to, to look our way. And, yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things that we've been excited about over the last few months is, is working with you guys. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And doing a little bit of oh, look okay. at you doing bring it work right together. Back. And so we got, uh, we, you know, taking the, the hard work that the Nancy's team has put together with the access to the product line yeah. and having great conversations with you, you and Chris. And I'm really excited about yeah, that opportunity right here to see how this thing's going to break out and, and partner together to give all of our customers an opportunity to, sure. to, to make it easier for them, right? Right. If it's easier, they're going to choose to do work with us. And the techs are question. a very important part in the field. So it, empowering the technicians with, obviously, a lot of the, the compliance stuff that, that we have, but the tools to get material in their hands faster. If they can get a part a day quicker, they're going to win a job. And, you know, I think it's, I think it's big. So. We always want to be a, certainly be a value, and we know that there's a uh, – that there's a need for, for cost savings associated with every job. And, and sometimes it's about materials, but what we also know is 
there's a lot more savings associated with time. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And and we recognize that. And you guys, guys like you, y'all recognize what it is that, that really brings the savings there. And uh, getting a great product, getting a quality product, uh, cost effective, but the service piece means everything. So uh, that's really where our mind is set. Yeah, great yeah. products and then being able to service from that. Yeah. We believe that's the equation that's going to going to make people choose to do the business with us. But, man, we're glad to be back and that's see great. people and I shake know, right? and I know. see eyes and Zoom see meeting. our friends. And you know, Zoom and go to meeting calls for and Teams yeah. calls for two years. <laughs> but we did good with it. We survived. Yeah, you know, we, we did. We know how to do things different. And I it know. taught us an awful lot in a short period of time. For sure. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, Thank you. Appreciate it, Adam. Thanks, Drew. Thank, Thank you very much, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Yeah.